Seneca says, we suffer more in imagination than reality. I just want to share that quote before I get started. I got to make sure that we are looking at the camera. So yeah, listen, Seneca, if you don't know who Seneca was, it was a great Roman emperor back in, I don't know when, but he was very smart. And he said, we suffer more in imagination than in reality, which means is a lot of us are worried so much about things that will never happen, that haven't happened yet, and we are over here stressing about it. I'm just looking at here to make sure that say I got a good angle. So listen, I want to talk to you about buying your first house. Let's say you, I'm going to walk you through the process and I'm going to show you how, what entails. This will be quick. It will take about, try to make it between six, seven minutes. So first, let's say you have uh, some money saved, X amount, whatever, 15,000, 20,000, and you're ready to buy your property. You're like, okay, we're ready to go. Uh, my first advice is to talk to a lender. Local lender is better than if you talk to somebody who is uh, online. Just because online, it's, you might find good deals, uh, but a lot of times those people will not work on the weekends, will not work on, in the evenings. They will be from eight to five and not weekends. And you want to be with somebody who works those weekends and, and long hours because when we make an offer or you and your agent are making an offer, that list, the listing agent will be calling the lender to make sure he is the, the buyer, you, it's well qualified to buy to buy that property. So you wanna make sure that you have a local lender that can answer any questions and is ready to go at any time you uh, need him. Uh, so second, second step is to talk to a realtor. You can talk to myself, you can talk to somebody else, whoever you wanna to talk to. Uh, you wanna to talk to somebody who has experience, who has been doing this, has been in the business for a while. You wanna to talk to somebody who's knowledgeable, remember, but a house is the biggest in, in biggest investment you will uh, buy. So you might buy Apple stock, you might buy Amazon stock, you buy you might buy any type of Amazon uh, stocks. But real estate is the biggest as uh, biggest investment. The more money you're gonna spend on something, so you wanna know you wanna talk to somebody who's helping you, who's experienced and know exactly what they're doing. Okay. The second, the, the second part is you're going to meet with them, with me or, or whoever it is. That person is going to walk you through the whole process. They're going to talk about your wants and needs. What is it that you really want? What is it that you need? You might want a $5 million home, but you actually need a $750,000 home. If you're a first-time home buyer, you may qualify for the program 3% down or 5% down. And the bank is going to, the bank is going to give you numbers on based on your income, credit, uh, uh, debt that you have, they will give you an estimate on how much you're going to pay, your, what your monthly payment is going to be, and then they're going to give you a uh, ex no, exact numbers on down payment and closing costs. Then uh, you will be, uh, I will be sending you properties to your email. Let's say buying a house, I like to tell this to my clients, is buying a house is a process of elimination. There might be 500 houses in the market right now in London County. There's not that many, but let's say there were. Uh, but the houses that you're looking for, it might be five, okay? It's a process of elimination. You want a basement, okay, we eliminate all the houses that don't want, that don't have basement. You want a car garage, okay, we eliminate the houses that don't have a car garage. So then we're gonna go take a look at them. We're gonna walk through the houses. We're gonna, I'm gonna be looking at the roof. I'm gonna be looking at the, expensive items, expensive ticket items like furnace, water heater, make sure those things are up to date, are newer or are perfectly working. That way, um, and I will be looking up in case there is a, a leak on the roof, we will make it, you will see it and, and it's not gonna be, uh, we see it and you know the roof might need replacement or, or, or fix. Also, so you're gonna walk through the house, you're gonna be looking at the, the good stuff, the kitchen, the bathrooms, the good stuff. Then we're gonna make an offer, okay? Two things are gonna happen. You're gonna get your offer accepted or you're gonna get a decline. One thing I like to do for my clients is I like to call the listing agent before making an offer. And I say, hey, 
Uh, John, I saw your property. We love it. Tell me, do you have any offers? Okay, yes, no, whatever. What's important to your clients? Okay, winning, it's about making the other party feel hurt, right? Okay, price. Oh, they want to close soon. Oh, okay, they need a rent back, okay? I talk to my to the buyers and look, this person, they have an offer, whatever. They want rent back. Rent back is when the seller buys the property and stays on the property a month or two months late, two months after. And they, they like kind of renting back the property. It's a seller. It's, a, it's called... Uh, Settlement post occupancy, we call it uh, a rent back. Okay, so then we tailor the, our offer based on what is important to the sellers and also what's important to the buyers, right? Because we're not going to overpay for something that is not value. But if we're making an offer, we're trying to have a win-win situation where my where the buyer is getting what he, what he wants and the seller is getting what he wants. Okay, win-win situation, and by Getting there is by learning the what the other person, the other party wants. Listening, right? So then, uh, and that helps me get our offers accepted and not decline. Uh, next step is we might do a home inspection. We're gonna have five to seven days to do a home inspection. You go in, we get an inspector. The inspector comes in and he does an inspection for the house, make sure everything's working great, the outlets are good. They're always gonna find things wrong with the property, always. They, uh, that's what they're paid for. Their, their job is to find things wrong with the property. Then we're gonna do, uh, you as a buyer can walk away from the deal and say, you know what, I'm not buying this house anymore. Or what we can do is we can ask the seller to fix it. So we send the lease and say, hey, Mr. Seller, can you fix X, Y, and Z? The seller might say, yeah, I'm gonna fix X and Z, but not Y, and then, this buyer has the right to say, sure, I'll take it, or this is not gonna work, I'm out. We get out of the contract, you get your EMD back, the earnest money deposit, which you will give as soon as the, the contract is ratified. If the seller accepts your contract, you will give uh, EMD, which is between one to 3%. It's a good faith uh, deposit that you say, hey, Mr. Seller, I really wanna buy your house, and here's X amount that I wanna put in, so this shows that I'm serious and I'm not just gonna walk away for no reason, okay? Then, if you continue to move forward, if the house has, a, if it's a condo or has a homeowner's association, you are going to have, the seller is gonna provide the resale package. It's the documents where it shows how much you're gonna pay a month, what's included, and the budget, and all the expenses, the money that the HOA has, now, the, you as a buyer has the option to say, ooh, I don't like this, or whatever. Whatever excuse, you can get out of the contract. You have three days to get out of the contract, okay? But if you still pursue on the, on the uh, sell, well, the next step is you buy, um, oh, still going. You buy, if you're still going, uh, you're still gonna buy the property, you, what happens next is, the appraisal, the buyer, the seller will send, I'm sorry, the buyers, you, your lender will order an appraisal, which is about $500 on average. It's a third party. They come in and evaluate the house to make sure that the property is worth what you're paying. And if it's not, if it's more, great for you. You already have instant equity on the property. You're winning. If it's not, there's two things that are going to happen. That are going to happen. You can come up with a difference in cash. Let's say the property is worth, you're under contract for 500. The property came in a value of 480. There is $20,000 difference. That means that you will have to come up with the $20,000 extra or the owner lowers the price to 480 and that's a new sales price. The lender will not lend you anything on, uh, the, lender, the lender is not going to lend you more than the appraised value. If the property appraises at 480, the lender is not gonna lend you 500. That's, that's uh, 480 is the is top, and that includes your down payment. So if you wanna buy it, you will have to come up with the extra $20,000, and the seller will, or the seller comes out, or you meet in the middle, okay? If the seller says, I'm not lowering my price, and you say, well, I don't have any more, any more cash, this is my first house, I'm out. You can walk away from the deal, and you get your money, earnest money deposit back. 
Another, another, the last contingency is the financing contingency. It's where the lender has been doing all the paperwork and all the stuff that been, they've been asking you. And God forbid, they miss something and they, they say, they're like, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Buyer, but we forgot to ask you about this car payment, whatever, blah, 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 a bunch of excuses, and you cannot afford for this. You can't afford this house anymore. Then the contract dies, they give you a, a denial letter, you walk away. Now, this usually happens the week of settlement, usually like a couple of days before settlement or date of settlement. So now you're at risk of losing your EMD, the, the earnest money deposit, and now you have no house, and if you told your apartments that you were moving, now you don't have where to live. This has happened a lot. That's why it's really important to have a local lender to be working with you instead of somebody who you know, you have no idea who it is that you have to dial 1-800-7 blah, blah, blah. So that's why it's important to have somebody who's with a 571-703 area code, a local lender. Okay? Uh, then... Settlement comes in, all, everything went smooth. You went with a local lender. You were working with me, Tavi Pena, one of the best. And you get to settlement, you get your keys. You do a final walkthrough before you, get your, before you sign the paperwork and get the keys. You do a final walkthrough, make sure the house is in the same conditions that it was when you first buy the property, when you first look at the property, okay? And items that the seller said that they were gonna fix, it's been fixed and everything else is good to go, okay? And then uh, you get your keys, you're good. That's it, that's the whole process. Uh, what is it, uh, 10, 11 minutes? 11 minutes is the how long it takes to buy a house. So this process usually takes about 30 days from the moment you made an, make an offer to the moment you close the deal. It's about 30 days. That's what the majority of lenders like to see. But if you're in a rush, we can always, we have a local lender will close uh, 14 days. I have lenders who close in eight days, nine days, whatever. But the norm is about 30 days. That way the seller has moved, have time to move out and we have time to do the home inspections, the appraisal and all that fun stuff. Okay? Listen, you want to own a property. If you don't own a house yet, you want to get in the market. If the interest rates are too high, you still want to get in the market and refinance later. Okay? Uh, my quote is, what did I say? It was, we suffer more in imagination than in reality, in, than in reality, Seneca. Listen, be great and David Pena with Effect Property. Take care.